Hey YouTube, what's up? Uh, we are here to begin the wiring process and if you've made it this far this is actually the easy part because actually drilling all the holes in this box uh, that's the hard part. You make a mistake you'll have to buy another box and start over but uh, the wiring is actually the easy part and when the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a jumper cable from here to here so that we can link these two bars together and make a negative uh, ground block because these are actually separated right now. Uh, the, I am going to use um, 12 gauge ultra wire. This is what I use. This is 12 gauge ultra wire. These are the main battery cables. This one's going to be the negative. Um, and for the jumper cable, I'm using uh, these connectors, and uh, they need to be uh, yellow. Uh, these will accommodate both 10 and 12 gauge wire and with that I made this little jumper like this with about maybe three inches of wire or so and uh, we're going to link the bottom bar and the top bar so I'm going to connect that for you and show you what it looks like okay so here it is here's our jumper cable here's our top bar and it's now connected to our bottom bar and we're ready for the next step which is connecting the negative terminal block running a wire through there and connecting that to our ground block so that anything else we connect to our ground block will be negatively grounded and for that I'm going to use a 12 gauge ultra wire and this piece is going to be about uh, 11 and a half inches long from end to end okay so about 11 and a half inches long so here's what we're going to do I'm going to run the wire through here first. This, this is the ground block part, the one with the loop. Okay, the connector on this side, uh, that's actually a, uh, a female quarter inch, uh, again, uh, in yellow, so it'll accommodate both 10 and 12 gauge wire. And what we're going to do is just kind of make a little loop here like that, loop it out a little bit. And slide that into the negative post right here, or negative blade, however you want to call it. And put that in nice and good like that. And then we're going to connect this to the terminal block down here. Probably this next one right there, so we'll put that one there. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what'll look good. What do you think? Like maybe there? Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. That looks kind of bulky. I think we're going to put it down there. Okay, so I'm going to put it down there and see how it looks. And if I don't like it, I'll move it. And so here is our negative uh, battery terminal. And that wire runs through here. And as you can see, we uh, hooked it up right down there. So this has come from the battery and now these are uh, connected. These are all negative ground. So the next thing we're going to do is remember our uh, SAE connector? It's that right down here. This is the black wire to that. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to run it underneath these two and then I'm going to attach it like maybe uh, maybe like right in here. Maybe right here right there. So we'll put that one in there. That's the next thing. Okay now this is a little bit of painstaking work in uh, getting these screws in here especially on this uh, this bottom row but it's not impossible. Um, you just got to be a little patient with it uh, you know, and have a thin enough screwdriver. Uh, but once you get them in there, I think I'm just going to push this one around real good. I didn't want my finger lining up with the other one. There we go. I'm right about that. There, tighten that down, and uh, just maybe angle it with that one on the other side there, and uh, we're ready for the next one. Okay, so there we go. So that's our battery um, connector going to our negative terminal. This is uh, the negative for our SAE. This one right here, and this is our jumper cable. Just to reiterate. And uh, that's actually starting to look like something. Let's go to the next phase. So the very next thing we want to do is we want to pull the other leads out that we have on the bottom of the box. Uh, namely, uh, the lights, that's, that's this black and uh, this white lead. The white lead right here is the uh, negative. 
The black in this particular case is the positive. And we did that by testing it out in an earlier video with, uh, with a 9 volt battery. This long lead right here, and it's is pretty long, this lead with the three connectors on it, or three, uh, three leads on it, actually is, uh, is this. Uh, strobe light. And uh, I'm going to show you what they all do. Red, of course, is positive. Black is negative. The yellow, what the yellow does, when you touch this to a negative lead, or you have this uh, actually hooked up to a, a monetary switch, and you hit it and it makes a connection to the negative, it changes the pattern of the light. And I'll demonstrate that in just a second. But I really don't like uh, working with wire uh, this thin. So uh, we've got to be a little bit careful with it. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to push this down as far as we can into the box so we get this entire wire as close to that rail on the bottom of the box as we possibly can. And right when we get it to right about there, we're just going to snip it. So we'll snip it like that. And that's all we'll need for that. Uh, this is some split loom. I got this at, uh, at Menards. I'm just experimenting with some decorating ideas. I figure blue for black, uh, maybe uh, red for positive, but it's uh, starting to look pretty cool in there. So I'm going to show you what this does. I've installed the uh, negative and positive uh, to a 9-volt uh, battery, and as you can see, it's got a pattern, and then it oscillates back and forth, and then it goes to the same pattern. Okay, And we're not doing anything with the yellow lead. It's just kind of sitting there. But... If you take the yellow lead, let me do this in a way that you guys can actually see what I'm doing, and I'm going to touch it now to the negative terminal, guess what? It changes the pattern. And it's going to stay like that until you touch it again. We got that pattern. And we got this pattern. I don't know how many patterns this actually comes with, but and it does a bunch of stuff. Let's see. Let's see if I like that one. You see that? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I kind of like that one. I think I'm going to stay with that one. Okay? Now, pick a pattern you like, and you won't have to fuss with the yellow wire anymore if you want the option of changing your lighting patterns you're going to need to install a monetary switch you could get as fancy with this box as you want like maybe i could put it like right there if i wanted to and what that would do is i would install uh, the yellow and then have another wire running out to the negative and anytime i wanted to change the pattern on my strobe i would just hit that button. It would make a connection to the negative block and the pattern would change. Um, I don't know. I think that's kind of overkill. If it's important to you and you want to add it, it would definitely be a cool feature. But it's just an option. But that's what the yellow wire does. I'm going to leave it like this. I don't want to mess with the yellow wire. Let's get back to wiring this thing up. Moving right along, this is our uh, 20 gauge negative lead in the white wire for the light up in front and uh, again whatever you buy you're going to have to check this out test it out yourself uh, so I've got the appropriate connector on there we're just going to crimp that down and you know it'll show you these are color coded you know for whatever and you can see the uh, red or yellow uh, red or you know in this case purple looks more in purple than anything else will be right in the middle there so I'm just going to crimp that down uh, I shaved about a an inch, excuse me, a half an inch off and then bent it over because these have a tendency to slide out, believe it or not, and crimp it down and, you know, just check it and make sure it won't slide out and as long as you've got a solid connection, it's good. Push the wire all the way down as far as you can. Try to get in front of, uh, in front of that rail, that front rail, uh, way down there uh, that's in front of that battery. Just keep pushing it down nice and slow and then we're just going to install that like maybe 
right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's going to go right there. Okay. Okay, so I'm ready to install this lead. Here we go. Notice I've angled it in the same angle as this one down here, so it just it looks good. Tighten it down. That's it. And we're ready for the next one. Okay, so next on our list is our uh, wiring for the strobe light. And it would be this thing right here. And we have our three connectors. And we are going to strip this down, maybe about a half inch at a time, strip that jacket out, till we get about maybe two and a half to three inches of these wires exposed. And we're going to go to Harbor Freight, uh, or you could go to your local electrical supply store and pick out some heat shrink butt connectors. These are watertight. Uh, there's a variety of them in here. Um, 10 to 12 gauge is yellow, 14 to 16 gauge is blue, and 16 to 22 gauge is red. We're going to use the blue ones right there. So we're going to take uh, we're going to take two of those out. The next thing we're going to do is snip off uh, about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more. Uh, of our red wire and we're going to take uh, a 20 inch length so this is going to be about 20 inches okay so this is actually I'll show you what it looks like here I got the close up here but I'll wind it up uh, 20 inch length of our uh, our 14 er, excuse me our uh, this is 16 gauge wire our 16 gauge um, silicone wire in red and we are going to wrap this around here a little bit. Just bring it right up so where it's level. Two wires, jackets meet, wind it around, take our blue connector, our blue butt connector, put that in there like that, twist it in until we get to the jackets, crimp it down. It's going to look like that. And the next step is we are going to get our heat shrink gun and heat shrink these. Something like that, right? There we go. Get some heat shrinkage. And we're done. Okay, so now we have both of our leads um, in here. Uh, thin leads are coming out. They're attached to thicker wires. They're both coming out of one end. We're going to leave our yellow wire alone, maybe snip the end off of it, and we're going to slip this in some split loom. Like this. Let's get that yellow wire in there like that. Okay. And we're just going to run these through nice and easy. And cover those up all the way down until we get to, and you know, we want to make sure that all of those wires are inside. Okay, and a little butt connector can snip out there a little bit. Then we're just going to add some zip ties and zip tie this up so we have this. Okay, you don't see any thin wires, all the thin wires are contained within this split loom. And a little bit of little piece of the butt connector, one of the butt connectors poking out, but that's what we want to do is we want to protect those thin wires as best as we can. Okay, let's add one of those. Let's add another one here. We'll just trim those off and then we'll add a connector onto here and we can attach it onto our negative terminal block. So here's the finished product. I've installed the crimp connector on here. This is going to go to our negative terminal block. We're going to take this. This is going to be uh, this lead will go to one of our power switches that's going to power that front light. But we're going to take this and just push this down in here somewhere into the box. 
and we're going to attach our negative lead. Maybe we can just bring it up just like that. And there you go. This, now, we are going to run underneath here. And if you follow along, it'll just come out right out through here. So we're just going to have this come out. And we know this is our our uh, front uh, LED light. Okay? So we're just going to run it under these two right here. And bring it out through here. And that's it for that. I know I melted these. Uh, I'm going to have to replace them. It's not a big deal. It just there wasn't enough uh, money in the budget for a retake. This stuff, uh, you know, we're on a tight budget here. We're paying for all this stuff out of pocket. Uh, <laughs> actually, I didn't see it till I saw the video. But I'm going to replace these real quick. And I suggest if you're going to put these on, you should do it before we put that fuse block in here. Uh, because it's going to be really tight in there. So I'm going to pop these out, replace them real quick, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I replaced these. Um, typically, I just use a nail clipper to clip these out. I went with yellow. Uh, wire ties instead, and then I just slip these underneath, just roll these around like this. And just kind of hide the tops of them. Kind of like that. And uh, that's it. That oh, looks pretty good. Just level that out a little bit. And that one, and uh, we're good to go. Okay, and so now this black wire we put in a butt connector with uh, with a red wire. This black wire is actually the positive lead to the front light, uh, the front LED light in front. And again, we put about 20 inches of uh, silicone. On the end of this, we're going to run it uh, under these two, and it's going to come out this end uh, where this one came out. That's what we're going to do next. Okay, and so once we've come out the other end of the box uh, with our leads, we're going to label them. As for strobe, L for LED, or whichever way you want to label them, it's just some tape around the wire, and uh, that's it. So now we flip the box around so we could uh, access it from the other side. And what you want to do is, you know, pop these out, these uh, these little caps, loosen these up a bit like that, and push them forward. So we want to give ourselves a little bit of room. Now I've already gone ahead and made the first set of leads. I'll show you how to make the second one, but we're basically going to go seven centimeters from end to end. Uh, that includes the part that we're going to uh, strip off. Uh, we're going to have two and one, and then. This longer piece is going to be about uh, 20 centimeters. So the silver tabs on here are the are the negatives. So we're going to install the one, pop it in. We're going to install the other one, pop it in, and we're going to leave this uh, without a connector at this point. Now, so far, the only other thing we'll have on this side that hasn't been connected is this red lead and this is for our SAE connector which is uh, right in here. You know I was looking at this and I decided to uh, uh, just move these out a little bit more and give myself some more room and add split loom to these wires that run along the bottom here. You can see the blue, here's a red one and I think w the other thing I did was I moved one of the leads that was up here uh, on the negative uh, terminal block to down here and uh, I thought this was a good time to kind of tidy up this wiring down in here. So this is a good time for that. Uh, let's go to the next phase, which is, uh, you know, making the last wire here for the positive leads, uh, which will go here and here. I'll show you how to make those. Also, uh, keep in mind, when you're looking at these, there is no convention on these. So uh, just because it's positive and it's a copper kind of color on... Um, on these uh, particular uh, charging bays, a switch, you know, it might be something else. So, so just, you know, you need to check what these are. These uh, happen to be marked, so you know that these are positive. This is marked positive on here with a plus, negative on here with a minus, so you know this is positive. But if you have a switch and it has a, uh, has a copper kind of or gold kind of color, 
don't just assume that it's going to be positive. You need to test those, and I'll show you when we do the switches, when we test the switches to find out what's what. Since I didn't have a wiring diagram with these, uh, you can actually see that uh, the uh, the gold color on the switches is actually going to be the negative. So, um, bear that in mind. Okay, bear that in mind. And you always have to check this stuff out. If it's not labeled, you need to find out for yourself what it is. So here we have uh, about eight centimeters from end to end. I stripped the ends off. Uh, and then and this is about maybe five and a half inches from end to end. And I've also stripped the ends off of that. So the first part of this is easy. We're just going to twist to one side. Pop it in here like that, and we're going to put it in our uh, crimp connector, our flag crimp connector here, or flag crimps, what they call it. This is a blue connector. I'm just going to hold it there for a second, make sure it's in, and squeeze it down. It's a ratcheting connector, and there you go. Hey, super duper. That's in there. The next step, what we're going to do, we're going to peel some of these back. Maybe about a third or so, maybe a little more. Oh, let's go a little bit more. To like right about there. Okay, this we're going to twist. It's going to go in our connector. We want to twist it, and then this part, I can't seem to find my nail clippers right now, so I'm just going to use my handy dandy scissors. And I'm going to clip this part off. Goodbye. Adios. See you. We're going to do the same thing on this end. Maybe about half or so, maybe 30 to 40 percent of these. We're going to take these out to the side, twist them slightly, twist the rest that we're going to that's going to go in the crimp connector. Only because the reason we're doing this is this wire is too thick. And it'll never fit in that blue connector. So we're going to have problems. So we need to snip some off. Like that. Okay. And then we're going to take these two pieces like this. And we're going to try to get them in one crimp connector. Right here. One of these. Let's see. Will that fit in there? I sure hope so. And try to work them in as, oops. Let's twist those down real hard like that as best we can. Flatten them out. And here we go. Let's try it again. Let's try to get those in there as best we can. Try to get those jackets in under that blue collar there. There we go, like that. Oh, that's looking much better. Okay, I'm liking that. I'm liking this a lot. You're just going to have to work with it. and Just make sure before you crimp it that those are matched like that. Okay, and we're going to put it in our crimp connector. Here we go. I hope it doesn't fall out. It will... You're going to experience a lot of fun with this, but once you get these down like this, it should be good. Crimp it down all the way. And let's see how we did. Hot dog, we are ready to go. Beautiful. Now, this one end over here, we're going to use a straight connector, female. So let's put that in there like that. Oops. Let's try it again. Here we go. And that's not working out. So let's snip a little bit off the end. Let's try to twist it a little harder. Snip some off the end here. And we'll try again, right? And just keep trying till we get it right. And it's uh, the whole point of life, I guess. We keep trying until we get it right, and eventually, I have confidence, we will get it right. 
here we go right there and keep pushing it crimp it down and hot dog we're ready to go okay this lead right here this lead right here this lead right here is our SAE connector we are going to install that on our fuse block let's say let's let's put that right here why not right put that right there okay this is our lead com coming off of uh, these our red uh, positive lead I think I'm going to sneak that underneath here just keep that wire on the down low like that for now let's put that in like right there and uh, I have a negative lead which is here and I'm going to install that over here that down so that's going to go like right here like this somehow some way shape or form on a negative terminal block and uh, that basically concludes our wiring for the bottom part of the box everything's uh, that we need is hooked up so that's what it looks like uh, I don't know I think it looks pretty cool so the next video the next video is going to show you uh, how I'm going to install the wiring for the top part, coordinate that with the bottom part on the fuse block, and uh, our, uh, our ammo can battery box is going to be uh, ready to go. Um, I've already tested these leads. Uh, normally what I did it was when I had the leads uh, bare. I would put the uh, negative on a negative terminal block and, and I would touch it here and I would get the front light to work, I would get the strobe to work and I knew that my wiring was okay and uh, I could proceed, I wouldn't have any problems. So you want, might want to test that out before you get there but we're, uh, we're ready to go, we're ready to go with the second video. I hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys like what you're uh, what you're seeing here. Um, this is basically how I wire all my ammo can battery boxes. Uh, if you got the uh, if you got it down uh, as far as uh, you know what I'm doing on this particular box, you can pretty much wire up any box in this particular fashion. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.